They say uh, in order to become a saint, you need to have performed two miracles. <clears throat> if you're a martyr, you only need to do one. You've already given yourself for whatever. Um, to, to be honest, one of the things you have to do to become a saint is you have to be dead. So this, um, my point is, barring those things, I have performed two uh, miracles here on earth. Um, the first one was in 1985 on a summer vacation with my family on a, on a small boat in a lake near Bend. My, my uncle drunkenly uh, dropped his, his watch overboard and everyone, oh, Joe, you idiot. And I, I, I said, oh, I'll get it. Um, uh, and I jumped out of the boat and I swam down and I was like trying, I thought, oh, I could grab it. It's, you know, it floated down to the bottom. But I went to the bottom, it was about 15 feet down, reached my hand in and it was there. <laughs> and I swam up to the top <clears throat> and everyone was like, you are so lucky. But my grandmother knew a devout Catholic, and she said, no, that was a miracle, he found it. <laughs> miracle one, she's currently in heaven, so at least that's what they told me. Um, <laughs> sorry, Nana. Um, 15 years later, the year of the Lord I don't believe in, 2000, I was on a, just finished dinner with my dad on his floating home and if you've it's not a house but it's a it's a house that's just on a float which is you know a bunch of boards tied together more to a dock it's a floating home um <clears throat> it's not weird and we finished dinner <clears throat> and we're chatting and he went to have a cigarette and it was a nice evening the windows were open and he yelled uh jay there's a body in the water call 911 I know. He said, there's a body in the water. Call 911. So I did. Um, <clears throat> but I didn't know how to, I didn't know my dad's address because it's, he lives on a floating home. <laughs> there's like letters and numbers and a code and a whole, you know, I didn't know it. So I, I, I said, you know, I, I'm not sure where I am. I was looking for mail. <clears throat> and I said, let me go get my dad. Um, I am a grown up at that point. So I went to go get my dad. <laughs> And I'm, I'm, and I, you know, my dad is sort of out looking, and he, and I said, I don't know where you live, and he sort of points out, and I hear him talking, and there is a body in the, this is off in the Columbia Slough, and it's dark, and there's this body just floating, drifting, and I got very scared, and I, it was very, I don't know, I'd never seen a body uh, floating in the river, and there was um, a home next to my father, and then there was an empty moorage. And the body was sort of floating that way, so I followed around on the dock. And my dad came around, and I'm like, what are we going to do? He's like, he's like, they're coming. If it comes in, we'll see if we can grab it. And, right. So we, sat, we stood there and waited for this body to float in. And it was very still, and it was very quiet. And it was actually a beautiful night. It was a good meal. I confess to smoking a cigarette while we waited for this body to come in. <laughs> um, what are you going to do? Um, and as he got closer, um, I, we saw it. I think it's moving. I think it's breathing. So it was, and my dad said it's not. And as I got closer, you could, it, you could see it was sort of breathing out. And my dad started yelling at it, and nothing came back. But my dad, the, the temperature of his voice told me that he was getting really scared, and when my dad gets scared, I, I get scared. And, um, and he just said, he's like, we got to get him. And as the body sort of came in, um, the, the floats are moored by these giant, giant uh, chains that go up to these sort of pylons that come out so as the, the water rises they can go up and down. And it was at a pretty good angle. And I am, you know, not particularly brave or have good balance or necessarily strong, but I, as it got closer, he, you, he was starting to struggle a little bit, so I just sort of walked down on one of the chains and just sort of like balanced there. And I bent down and, and I picked this man up like you would pick up a toddler or a sack of groceries, fully grown, um, fully wet <laughs> uh, man out of the water like it was nothing. And I picked him up and I set him on the dock. And 
I wasn't nervous, I wasn't stressed out, I wasn't anything, it was just I reached down and picked him up. And my dad was just staring at me. And I said, what's wrong? And he just sort of looked down and then he said, Rich? <laughs> it was his next door neighbor, Rich. <laughs> Rich had, for not the first time, not taken a right and just walked straight into the water. This was the first time that, that anyone knew that Rich didn't immediately get out of the water and he just floated around for a half hour or so. <laughs> we know this because Rich was on a phone call to his wife, um, I believe swearing up and down that he had not been drinking. Um, and she would later confirm that's when the line went dead. He had just been hanging out in the water for a half hour. Um, <clears throat> And so, you know, my dad sort of got rich squared away, and my dad just kept looking at me, and I said, w w what's wrong? And he said, he said, you have superhuman strength. <laughs> and I said, like one of those people who lifts the, the bus off the kid, and he said, he's like, you lifted Rich out of the water like he was nothing. And I'm like, he felt like nothing. And truly, I remember it. he felt like nothing. It was not a big deal. <clears throat> Miracle number two. So, hopefully, when I die, <laughs> um, I hope somebody uh, from this audience or writes an email <clears throat> to a church I am no longer a member of and insists that I be canonized and, um, because that's two pretty fantastic miracles, I think. Thank you. Thank you.